Hi everyone and welcome to my monthly live stream. I hope that everything is working fine with the sound, the visual and all that good stuff. Uh, as always, I'm a little bit nervous in the beginning because you never know <laughs> what will happen when you're doing stuff live. But it looks like I am on the screen, so please come and say hi in the chat so I know what people you are over there and I can say hi to you and of course ask questions and all that good stuff. Uh, hi Duncan from Hampshire UK and we also have uh, Louise from uh, SW Arizona and she says I have read your book but haven't applied the information yet. Great book, thank you so much. And we're going to talk a bit about my book first because it's basically like a celebration in a way because um, about a year ago I shared with you that I was planning to make a cover stitch book and now I am finally having this book in my hand and it's been a wild ride doing this on top of working at a full-time day job. <laughs> so it has been kind of intense and all the doing all the other stuff as well. But this book has been so well received. I had no idea that it would gain so much attention. So to be honest, I've been a bit overwhelmed as well because so many has been interested in this book and it also even took to the number one spot on the Amazon sewing lists around the world, which is very, very exciting as you can imagine, being, you know, a small time self-publishing author with, with no publishing industry background or um, you know anything like that uh, pushing it so that's been really really exciting and, and I've got some fantastic feedback and I'm so grateful for that and thank you so much to everyone who is watching this and has bought the book that means so much to me and it also validated the, the thought that I had that this is a topic that needed to be addressed in the book as well because as those of us who already have a corset machine has experienced it's not always an easy machine to use which is also the reason why i decided that i wanted to write this book so in today's live stream i will talk about techniques that are inspired by ready to wear and that you can use using your own domestic cover stitch machine and i'm also sure that some of you watching perhaps don't even ha have a cover stitch machine so i thought at the end of the chat we will do like a roundup and talk a bit about a uh, different cover stitch machine if you have any brand recommendation those of you already have a machine and what to think about when you're buying one so you can make an informed purchase because it's a big investment to buy a cover stitch machine so it's not something that you just run out and buy whatever machine you can find it's definitely something you need to consider a lot before you make that purchase if you want to have a machine so behind me here is a big pile of red to wear clothes. So this is going to be a really fun live stream where I share with you a lot of different red to wear techniques that you can use with your cover stitch machine for. So we're going to, to dive in really like detail. So some of you will recognize from the book if you already had it, but there will be lots of other methods as well, but you can use the practice and principles that I teach you in this book to apply a lot of super cool red to wear techniques. But now I will say hi to all the people in the chat. Um, hi Shaneka from New York City. Hi Bettina from Germany. Hi Howard from New York City. And I just received my cover book this week. So Howard, hi, thank you so much. Renee, hi from Omaha, Nebraska, right? <laughs> if I can, I got that right. Sorry if I don't, all the states in the US. So excited to have your book. Um, and uh, Francesca says, hello from the Netherlands. And uh, there were several of you wishes me very well for the book, like Rob and Duncan. And Seri is from Wiltshire in UK. Uh, and Celeste is from Central New York, right? Uh, and Marta from Poland. Hi, Marta. And we have Sophie from Montreal. And we have Foran from East Yorkshire. Lots of UK people here tonight. That's so fun. And we have Dawn Orlando from S-E-M-N. Uh, is that Minnesota? Hmm, I'm not really sure what that is. I, I, I wish I was a little bit better with geography, but I kind of forgot a lot of the school. Um, and Michelle says, I received your book on Friday from Alberta, Canada. And we also have Susanne. Hi, Susanne. And we are actually living quite close here in Sweden. So 
it's basically a neighbor. So they usually pop. It's so nice to have some Swedish people here as well because we are definitely an international crowd in the live stream. So please ask away, and I will keep an eye on the chat because to try to answer your questions. And also, don't hesitate to go into the chat and help each other out because I there are so many things to keep track of when I'm doing this live stream. So I'm not always. Uh, observant of all the things going on at the same time and we have more people in the chat now Kate says I love the book can't wait to get into the photo hi from Chicago thank you so much Kate and we have Kristen from Germany hi Kristen we have uh, Doria from Minnesota oh thank you very much uh, I, I know SP thank, uh, for first St. Paul but SE that's that's another place and on the stitches I love your username in Norfolk UK and Rosie from California. We have a busy, busy chat this night. This is going to be so fun. And uh, well, that's, I think, oh, sorry if I missed anyone, but I think I ca catch you all guys and I will keep an eye on the chat. But now we're going to talk about all the cool stuff you can do with a conversation machine that you might not think about when you first consider getting a conversation machine or if you already have one, but you primarily use it for hemming knits, which is where a lot of us are buying a conversation machine. It was the reason why I bought my first one 15 years ago, because I wasn't happy with how my regular sewing machine would do hemming, stretchy knit fabric. So that's definitely a good reason to buy a conversation machine. But what's even better is that there are so many other uses and we can get a lot of inspiration from the ready to wear industry to stay really put good use to the conversation machine. So I'm going to start off by going through some of the ways that you can use your cover stitch machine when making jeans because I know a lot of you are really into jeans making it's become really popular in the last few years to make our own jeans you know for instance the closet case pattern ginger right has been a big hit in the sewing community and most of these techniques are obviously done on using a regular sewing machine but when we look inside ready to wear jeans they are actually using the cover stitch machine a bit so I'm going to run through some of those techniques and see what you think about it um so this is a jeans hem and as you might have known if you know but a cover stitch can not only stitch um a two or three node it also can stitch a single needle chain stitch so the on the inside on a lot of ready to wear jeans they are actually using the chain stitch and not a regular straight stitch. And the reason for that is that, as you can probably see in the picture here, um, oh, we can't see it too clearly that, but you can see the chains on the inside, right? The reason for that is that because the chain stitch has a little bit of a different property than straight stitch, it automatically creates, um, you know, the sort of wavy texture that we like to have on our jeans. So this is a sample that I, when I tried using the stitch, and just already, just by stitching it, it has already started to crease a little bit. So this is a way to actually come close. And it's not at all difficult to chain stitch jeans on a cover stitch machine, unless you have like a super thick denim, then probably cover stitch machine is not the best choice. And another thing is of course that you should use the largest needle that a cover stitch machine can handle. And secondly, for the most part, at least my cover stitch machine, which is a Yanova, by the way, here, can't handle top stitch thread <coughs> in the needle position, only in the looper. So this is a regular top stitch thread that we usually use. But if your machine can't handle that with the tension, you can use the same regular sewing thread. This is the color is the exact same, but it's good to know with the cover stitch machine that it would much prefer a regular sewing machine thread. You can also try to use two uh, double strands of this to get a fuller effect, but that works better, I find, than using the top stitch thread. Again, it might vary from machine to machine. Sorry, I just need to drink because I got, caught, caught something dry in the... Um. So that's a good start to try using the chain stitch for that really fine finishing on jeans when you're hemming. And a second thing that you can use for the cover stitch machine when you're making jeans is this. You can see now, uh, I'm always trying to do so many things at the same time. But on, on most ready to wear 
jeans waistband one row or both rows are stitched with a chain stitch and not a straight stitch so here you can see an example of a pair of vintage levi's that the upper row on the inside is a straight stitch and the lower row is actually done using a chain stitch so this is on the inside so i actually have a pair of jeans here so you can see how this works so on the outside obviously it's straight stitch that you see and then on the inside uh, it's a chain form because they use the chain stitch now if you have <laughs> tried <laughs> Uh, using a cover stitch and and trying to stitch um, a 90 degree angle you know that it's pretty much impossible uh, and they don't do that in the garment industry either instead it's stitched using the chain stitch up here I hope you can see this and then where my index finger points they stop the chain stitch and then they stitch a regular straight stitch around here and then here at the lower part it's a it's a second row chain stitch but here they use the golden jeans thread and here they use a navy thread so this is a really fun way to experiment again some cover stitch machine will not love thick denim layers so this is something i cannot guarantee that every every cover stitch machine will love but it's definitely something that you will be able to do if you are not using the sort of super heavy denim and also of course a good quality cover stitch machine helps with that as well so this is a really fun technique i, I noticed in some designer jeans i think it was calvin klein or something that i looked they actually used a contrasting thread in the loop because this is the chain stitch here so they had like blue and red and green so if you want to put some really like professional flair on the inside you can definitely use the chain stitch for that so the tip is to use a regular uh, sewing machine thread in the needle but you can go with a thicker thread in the looper either woolen nylon or top stitch thread to get the thick chain and then not stitching all the way around in squares but stop and then use a regular stitch to finish the corner hope that makes sense you can please uh, tell me if I don't make sense because <laughs> sometimes it's hard to explain all the little details um, so I, I'm really curious to see if you have tried using your cover stitch machine for jeans making because and I also have a third tip about making uh, trousers in general but in particular jeans of course and that is when in in um, in the garment industry when they make belt loops they pretty much always use a cover stitch machine now when we are doing belt loops at, uh, at our domestic sewing machines we perhaps um, finish one edge with a serger or a six x six in a regular sewing machine then we press fold and overlap and then we stitch two rows of straight stitch but using a wide cover stitch two needle you will minimize a lot of steps and i described two different methods in my book one is to use one of these belt loops <laughs> attachment this one is generic so i can use it on my genoma baby lock i know has an attachment for their cover stitch machine and i think some other brands as well uh the Yanoma doesn't have it at least what that i know of and i also show in the book a paper and press uh method uh, and also this is the third method that you can use you can also use your regular binder to to pull the uh what do you call what do you call bias binder right sorry I, a lot for you can actually pull the fabric inside this and you will create this fold now my <laughs> my binder uh what is it called binder bias binder is it called that mine is 25 millimeter which is about one inch so it's pretty wide and not really great for making belt loops but i know there are some narrow ones as well i'm really curious to, to know if you are actually using the bias binder because that would be a tip i think uh if you don't have a cover stitch machine and want to use a serger or a regular sewing machine for finishing these uh if you're using the bias binder because that's pretty clever i think as well so you just whoops press it and then hopefully it works and um how it says i use wonder type to press the belt loop close then stitch yeah because that is the problem when you're doing belt loop sometimes they tend to flip up and if you can press it first then the the back side will sort of cover everything like that so that's a, that's a nice way of using the cover stitch machine so you just strip that in and you stitch all the way and then you cut it to pieces and apply it just like you would 
with a regular bent loop. Hope that makes sense. And um, that was how to some tips about how to use the cover stitch machine. I noticed actually on the pair of lead jeans that here they also top stitch the the yoke detailing using a chain stitch. Again, that's a lot of layers, so I'm not really sure it would work <laughs> on any type of cover stitch machine. My you know me is not great on thick bulky layers, so uh, I I cannot give you guarantees about that will work. So you have to be uh, realistic, I would say, which I talk a lot about in my book as well, that we need to have um, reasonable expectations of a cover stitch machine because it's primarily a useful tool for sewing with knits and lighter wovens more than thick fabrics because it just isn't strong enough. And also a lot of cover stitch machines, they don't really support the larger needles, at least mine does goes up only to 90 slash uh, 14. So it's not, I think, have enough to use like top stitching many thick layers of denim. That's at least my opinion about that. And Duncan also brings a good point about the uh, belt loop. Uh, I use the belt loop adaption, but it needs an extra few millimeter more than suggested. Absolutely, because when you're folding, uh, the fold also eats up a little bit of um, the width. And also it's nice to have it a little bit overlapping because otherwise you will have fabric fraying and you might split up the seam a bit. So it's definitely, as Duncan said, a good idea to add a little bit of extra width when you're cutting the strips. Um, and now we have Michelle here from New Zealand. Hi, good morning, good morning. You're up pretty early, I, I assume. I'm really curious to know the time. It's, it's eight o'clock here now in Sweden and we had a daylight saving shift tonight. So if you wonder if the time might seem off on YouTube because it, it keep on saying that it was 7 p.m. but it's 8 p.m. here in Sweden at least and it's getting dark now. Um, so we just put the hour front. So now we're, we're back at six hour from the cent Eastern Euro Eastern Eastern Central time. No, East, oh, Pacific, oh, I just get it wrong. It's, it's six hours from the New, New York time right now here in Sweden. So I probably messed that up. <laughs> it's it's a lot of time so to keep track of when you're doing the live stream. So I am always worried that I might miss some other continent or countries daytime saving. And I f we talked about that uh, when the last day daytime saving happened and it seems like the EU, at least EU, EU the European Union is about to um, scrap the day daylight saving thingy. And I think it was 2020, it will probably disappear at least here in Europe. So that's really interesting to see if that will affect us in some way, because it doesn't really feel as useful uh, in modern times, but we'll see. Um, and yes, it's early in, in New Zealand. It's 7am, 7, 7 7 7 717 to be exact. Yeah, it's early morning. And in Portland, it's 11.15 a.m. So yeah, we're all over the place. So that's why I tried to make this time to, to be able to so many uh, as possible can watch it live. But it's definitely a bit tricky because we all have so many time zones. Now we're going to move on to how to use the cover stitch machine for active wear and to mimic that. So what I have, I have so, so many things. I pretty much scrambled. Uh, my entire family wardrobe uh, to find some examples on ready-to-wear because um, since I make most of my own clothes these days most of my ready-to-wear inspiration is, is either looking through my children's or my husband's wardrobe or or you know running around in stores checking out details because I, I don't really have so much but I do have a pair of leggings and I'm going to show you some of the way that we can mimic the finishing on the uh, ready to wear leggings. So these ones are done using the industrial flat block seam and that is unfortunately not yet accessible to us in the home sewing community. Um, uh, the brother, let me see if I get this right, please correct me now in the chat. Is it CV3550? Please correct me if I'm wrong, but brother has put out a cover stitch machine that can do a top cover which means that it can stitch this hem seam that you can see on the leggings here. This is a top cover seam. So on the inside, it looks like a regular uh, three thread cover stitch. On the outside, it has this very distinct um, top cover look. So 
that's definitely an option to explore now if you're doing a lot of red to wear and consider if you're going to invest in one of these. I tried one last year and I found the learning curve was, mm, yeah, it was a little bit tricky to be honest. Uh, and I found it a little bit more difficult to thread than my Yanome, but I can definitely see myself getting a type of that type of machine in the future. So this is the, this, this hem you can actually do if you have the brother machine, not the regular three needle cover stitch machine or two needle cover stitch machine, you can't do this. But what you can do if you have a three needle cover stitch machine is to use the reverse cover, <laughs> reverse. I'm, 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 I'm scamming in words here. You can use the reverse cover stitch to kind of, kind of mimic. So this is a pair of leggings that I did just recently and I've done a video about that if you're more curious. Um, this is using the reverse cover stitching. So I used regular thread on the inside. You can see the three rows. And then in the looper, I used the woolly nylon, this one. I, I speak so highly about it. It's the Madeira Aeroflock. I should put my glasses on. This is such a good quality um, woolly nylon. It's really, really beautiful. It comes in beautiful colors as well. Perfect if you want to use a lot of contrasting detail. So this is actually a good way to kind of mimic it, even though you don't have one of those top cover machine. And uh, Kristen has the uh, the brother CV3550. Yes, I did manage to say the right number. And she says it's awesome. Yeah, I'm kind of lusting after a little bit. Uh, and if I buy a new cover stitch machine, I think I will buy a top cover. But it's such a big investment to me, <laughs> even though I do a lot of cover stitching, it's still a little bit on the fence. But I, I borrowed it last year in, in research for my book and, and stuff. So, and yeah, it was very, very um, tempting to get one of those, especially since I make so much activewear. And um, Rhoda says, the old Fab 4874 that I have can do top cover stitch and several unique decorated cover stitch. Yeah, because that's really one of the cool thing about cover stitching. We, but you don't always think about when you get one because you think, yeah, I need it to hem stuff. But you can do so many things. And you can also use, um, now I'm going to say this word wrong in English, a uh, variegated thread, uh, which is like spun using several different shades or several different colors. So you can actually get this like rainbow. I have, I have one with uh, several shades of blue from um, Maxilock, right? Is it variegated thread? Oh, I can't remember. Please correct me. But that's also a really cool way of being able to create this really decorative stitching on the outside, just to using the reverse cover stitching. Uh, also, you can use um, the rayon um, embroidery thread in the looper. You should definitely know that again, cover stitch machine tends to be tends to be quite fickle when it comes to using it in the needles. I have not been successful with that. So I prefer to use regular sewing thread or overlock thread for that or sewed thread for, for the needles. Uh, gradient says counterlapse. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Cause I, f I think you know what I mean? Cause there is, it's, it creates like a um, continuous uh, pattern. It's really, really beautiful. So if you want to do that, you can also check out those thread cause they come on cones, just like regular third year thread, third year thread. <laughs> um, and you thank you, Duncan and Andrea says that I'm pronouncing it right. Thank you so much. <laughs> and and the worst part is that um, I, I always find that I why I should become better, but sometimes I feel like I'm getting worse <laughs> with the pronunciation. But it's like I get this like blank mind at times because I'm trying to keep up with so many things. But thank you so much. That's very encouraging to hear. And but while I think. Um, a lot of you might be like super tempted to also create um, this because you can see on most ready to wear leggings these days and most ready to wear tops as well. They have this um, flat block seam, industrial flat block seam. And this is kind of hard to replicate uh, on leggings, long leggings. Why you might ask? Well, because at the <laughs> at some point, you will be stitching a very, very narrow space. And it means like you have to scrunch and you have to um, fold and scrunch and fold because you need to have this flap when you're cover stitching. So I don't 
generally recommend it because proper stitching needs like free range feeding so as soon as it um enter uh, enter some kind of um, uh, a bump on the way on the road uh, it tends to start skips skipping stitches but you can solve it uh by using um a leggings pattern for instance or uh, that has two seams one on the outer and one on the inside so you can actually do a reverse cover stitching on the outside seam so you get all the decoration and you can stitch that on the flat make it much easier and then on the inside you can finish the seam using a regular overlock seam like a, a serger seam or a sewing machine stretch seam so you can do that and you will still get this decorative effect so we have to be a bit realistic i, I think sometimes i think sometimes it's easy and i've done I've definitely done that myself to be like try to make the cover stitch machine do things that it's not really designed to do so there's always a little bit of a trade-off and i know some people have managed to do it on both sides but not on my machine i have not been successful and reached the sort of result that i want so there is a little bit of a trade-off when it comes to that i would love to hear your experience with it um which also brings me to another example of activewear this is um a base layer top from the uh, brand um, Helle Hansen, which I have. And again, this has flat side seams, which is obviously really nice and to have because they don't really rub. Uh, but again, it's done using an industrial flat block seam and you can't do the same on your regular serger. But what you can do is again, bring out the cover stitch machine. So first, this is a top that I made myself and if you check out my last video you can also see more about it but this top is I first stitched the seams together using um, a narrow zigzag seam uh, and then I pressed the seam flat like this on the inside and used a three needle cover stitch over the seam so it's like a top stitching and this is how it looks on the outside again I use the same woolen iron that I showed you in, in the last example, so if you, you can see something. Uh, so it looks like this. And the side panels, it looks like this. So you can see, you can actually achieve a similar result using your cover stitch machine, which is one of the very exciting potential that this machine has. So, and I, again, I describe these books, uh, these, <laughs> these books, uh, this method in my book, Master the Cover Stitch Machine, and also in my last book, Sewing Active, where you can also find some information about that. And you can also, of course, top stitch um, using re reverse cover stitching over a, uh, an overlocked seam. The disadvantage with that is that it creates more bulk. So my main tip, if you want to stitch uh, over um, an overlock seam, I recommend that you use, if you have a serger, you use a three thread serger, stitch a wide one rather than the four thread because that adds some more bulk. And also you can experiment perhaps with the stitch length so that the thread is more spaced out because all these little things actually can make a big difference when it comes to getting uh, the reverse cover stitching right. Because if the seam is too bulky, the cover stitch machines tend to not feed properly and then that can usually cause the skip stitches and the annoying side of having a cover stitch machine i'd love to hear your thoughts about that but i definitely recommend that you you if you want to stitch over an overlock scene you definitely need to think about um how you can reduce the bulk of that seam so i wouldn't for instance use woolen island the looper that seems really unnecessary when you're surging you, you can of course as i showed you use woolen iron in the cover stitch looper but not in the surgery loop if you plan to then stitch over it using um, a cover stitch machine so i'd love to hear your thoughts about that and rudy has some suggestion also about um, using a cover stitch machine in narrow surfaces it helps tremendously if you turn the garment inside out for cover stitching in small spaces yeah definitely and also this can also be a little bit tricky on the genome that i have it has a free arm but you can also turn it inside out and stitch it, even though all the seams are stitched together. But again, you have to like mm, use the fingers a little bit to make the finishing as smooth as possible. Hope that makes sense. Um, yeah, and another way that is really nice to have a cover stitch when you're sewing leggings is that on the inside, um, 
the lining is usually stitched down using a narrow um, cover stitch, two needle cover stitch seam. So it this keeps the lining from not going on from the outside just like you do. Is it called under stitching, right? When you do with facing, it's the same principle and you stitch this over elastic. Uh, and this is a great way because you can actually do this with your regular cover stitch machine. Now, again, elastic can be a little bit of a tricky thing because it adds more bulk. So if you have problems with that, I would definitely recommend that you pick um, a thinner elastic, like a thin knitted elastic or even a clear elastic. Those are definitely more easy to stitch over compared to those thick um, elastic with a lot of ridges because that will usually sort of stress out the needles and um, it will cause skip stitches. But again, a great way to use. You can, of course, use a regular twin needle on your sewing machine for this as well, but the finishing of um, a cover stitch machine looks very, very professional. I'm going to show you a close-up from... Uh, my last book um you can see here if i can pick the right slider so this is how it looks so the lining is stitched using the cover stitch and this is a pocket so and, and this is actually stitched using not a chain stitch but the three step straight stitch but as you can see this is the principle that you you're doing and it works really well with the cover stitch machine and speaking of reverse cover stitch machine, I can give you another example as well. This is another way of mimicking the um, the crot seam. You can again apply the same method using reverse cover stitching. Works really, really well. But as you can note this here, I have not stitched the waistband because it's just too much bulk to use reverse cover stitching because you have so many, many, many layers. It's so many layers, I, I can't even count them, but it's definitely a risky endeavor. So the rule of thumb with the cover stitch machine is to pick your battles and usually go for the seams that doesn't have too much bulk if you want to be really successful with it and, and not want to throw it out of the window, which I think we've all felt at one point or another. Um, so these were some of the tips for activewear. Now, I'd love to hear what sort of cover stitch machine that you have in, in the chat and what you think about it. Mine is um, Yanome 2000 CPX. It's the upgraded model for the 1000 CPX. It's definitely one of those cover stitch machine that um, gets, how shall I put it, nicely mixed reviews. Uh, some hate it, some think it works fine. I I'm actually quite happy with mine. Um, one reason to buy a uh, Yanome is that it has so many attachments coming with this machine. Uh, I think Yanome is probably the, the brand who has most attachment uh, and accessories for their cover stitch machine. And secondly, it's really easy to thread. Uh, and the biggest drawback, which I also think is the reason why some people don't really like it, is that it's very sensitive to different type of materials. So um you would usually have to do a lot of different um changes like changing tension sometimes um you need to change the tension on just one needle in order to perfect um an even stitch and also you need to experiment with the pressure foot pressure you need to experiment with the differential feed especially when you're sewing over bulky layers stitch lengths the genoma definitely likes uh, longer stitch lengths i find it's the best result how was around three to even up to four but if you do four you you lose some of the stretch uh so a shorter stitch length is better for that um i think the sort of general consensus on the internet is that the yuki similar price i don't remember the model number but i'm sure some of you have it is probably a better machine so that could be something to consider instead if you're looking for a cover stitch machine in that price range because that's i would say that the yuki and the yanome is like in the mid price range uh which also the brother that top cover machine is also i think in roundly around the same price range the cv 30 35 50 um and so and a step up from that is the Babylock range and Babylock does both 
standalone conversation machine, which uh, seems to be a, a lot of people are very, very happy. They again also have a nice range of accessories and you can also get the combination machine, the baby lock ovation. And I think it's the Gloria is a new one. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, because I know there's there's an even more expensive, more bells and whistles model coming out, which has a combination machine. And so these are the more popular ones. I think I've listed those on top of the head. And also my first one was a Fuff a combo machine. Uh, I bought the, the, the lowest price of the Puff, Fuff combo machine. And I was, uh, to be honest, it wasn't a very good machine. But this was also, remember that was about 15 years ago. So I think Composite Machine has, has had a journey and I probably, I'm probably i sure that Fuff does better sewing machines today. Husky Lock is another popular brand, which I have no experience with. And we have some uh, interesting, um, Cecilia says, uh, I have the brother CB3550, no issues encountered so far. I find it easy to thread and use. Well, that's really good to hear. Um, Duncan has a baby lock ovation, a dream to use with so many stitch combination, but it is a cover locker. The only drawback is no free arm, but it's auto thread and auto tension. That's really, really nice. And Krista says the brother uses regular sewing machine needles. Uh, yeah, Krista, that's a good thing to know that um, it depends on the model and the brand, which type of needle. So some use surgery needles like the ELX system, which um, for instance, the baby lock, uh, I think, I'm pretty sure, and baby lock and definitely the genome. Whereas as Krista said, uh, brother use regular sewing machines. So you never need to do your research and make sure that you actually use the right type of system for your machine. Um, and Gloria actually has two names. It's Gloria in the UK and Triumph in the USA. And for instance, I have the same, you know, as model I used for stretch needs only so far, but I find it trouble so free so far. I think so too. And I think it's a wonderful machine for, you know, stitching regular knit fabrics. And I personally think that it's gotten a bit of a bad reputation, but it could also be that it have been some bad eggs out there. And they, I actually heard, speaking of the Yanoma, which could be good to know, because that could be true about other other machines as well. Uh, one sewing mechanic told me that um, the first batches of the Yanoma cover pro, I think that was the, the thousand models, was actually not um, optimized for th stitching over thicker layers. Uh, according to him, this could be very wrong, so I don't... Uh, it was um, optimized for thinner fabrics, because that's the more common in Japan where the Genoma brand hails from. If that's true or if that's like a midwife state, I have no idea. But it does make sense that that could be a problem because like at least here in Sweden, we like to stitch over thicker knits. So yeah, it could be a configuration problem as well. Um, but Ina, uh, Rhoda says, I have had a baby lock cover stitch for over eight years and I never had any issue with it. That speaks volumes for that. The quality of that brand. Bettina says, I have a baby lock glory and I love it. It's a bit inconvenient if you have to switch between cover and overlock often for a project, but threading it is so quick, so it's not too bad. Good to know. And Howard says, I have the Genome 9000 and the Brother 2340 CV, and I prefer the Brother for ease of use and the Genome for the large workspace area. Well, Louise says, um, I'm going to transfer now because you're writing it. Uh, hi, I'm from Denmark. I have the Yanoma 1000 CPEX. I am a bit mixed about it. It does skip stitches. And that's why I've ordered your book to get can help with your machine and, and learn it better. Yes, I talk a lot about that because it's a lot of actually skip stitches can be remedied just adjusting the tension. And that is where I think that the weakness of the Yanoma is that it does require a lot of experimentation. And... Um, also, I've heard some people say that on the thousand that it actually helps raising the feed dogs, but it's probably better to have a, a mechanic adjust it because that's what they've done. Uh, the guy that I talked about, the mechanic said that they've done that. Uh, they've taken in some of the Genome thousand and adjusted the feed dogs, and that has helped with the problem because that's probably I think that was really related about the thickness of the fabric. Um, and uh, Duncan says, I kept my Imagine Bettina so I could swap machines. You know, when you start sewing, you realize, because as I've been thinking about investing in a top cover machine, I've sort of 
decided that I don't want to get rid of the Yanome <laughs> because it's so nice to actually have two composite machine. And then for instance, I could set up, I'm, I have a friend who, who um, uses, she has a, both the Yanome and the Babylock and she used the Babylock for um, uh, most things, but I think she used the Yanome for binding because the binding thing, um, setting up that, is quite time consuming, you have to nail it, so it's nice to have one machine set up just for that, but it's a very luxurious thing to, to have two composite machines when, when just buying one is, is a huge investment, so it's definitely not something that is accessible for everyone, but it's, I can totally see it's tempting. Um, so we have a lot of different opinions, not, not one Yuki owner here, uh, if I haven't missed one, but I've, I've heard a lot of the, the number slips me now, but it's one one three needle machine that you will find everywhere. I think it starts with M M C S probably. So definitely do your research if you are planning on buying Kovacic machine or if you are planning to upgrade your Kovacic machine. I definitely think that the baby lock seems to be top of the line because I just hear that people are the most happy about that one. Also, it's good to know that. If you buy the standalone Babylock cover search machine, it doesn't have auto tension, um, which the Babylock Surges has, which I mine has. Oh, it's probably it's over there right now, uh, and I love. But um, and I, it makes sense because with the cover stitching, <coughs> tension is a huge deal. So it does make sense that you might benefit from being able to adjust that manually. Um, so just so you know that you won't get auto tension if you you get the standalone baby lock, at least not the ones that I know. I could be wrong if there's some other other type of machine as well. Um, and Sarah asks about the needles. What needles do you use for the cover stitching jeans using the baby lock? And Duncan says Sarah the ELX needles. Yeah. They work really, really well. I use the ALX for the Yanome as well. Work really well on denim. Um, they come in two two versions. One that is uh, suitable for like more stretch knit fabrics, and one which is more like a universal needle. Uh, I've found both work well uh, with denim. I haven't like stitched like heavy duty denim because I wouldn't want to subject my cover stitch machine for that. But you know. Regular garment denim works really nice with the cover stitch machine. And we also have uh, Celeste has, I have the Uke Industrial 3 needle. It has a limited height for fabric thickness. It does have a cover, but I have not done the setup because I'm afraid I won't get the regular cover stitch to work. Um, yeah, that's also something to consider. That I think, and you can definitely chime in if you have a brother. What I noticed when I uh, borrowed the brother is that when you raise the presser foot, it almost you almost think like did I really raise it because it the the um the distance between the feed dogs and the presser foot is not very high compared to the Yanoma for instance so I was a little bit hesitant uh about the capability of stitching thick layers of the brother but but I know some of you guys in the chat has it so please chime in um about that as well but there's also something to consider it all depends so you it's good to have like an all-round machine I think um, if I if I had bought my first machine today, I would probably I would probably have bought a three needle one and not the top cover because it's definitely um, an extra learning experience. But I also know people have not owned a cover stitch machine before and still have been really really happy with how the top cover works. So it's definitely a bit of a preference as well. Um, anyways. Let's move on to some other cool techniques that you can do with your cover search machine because we have still like a big bunch of things. And now I'm going to talk about swimwear, which is another thing that I know that some of you are interested in. And it's also something that you can do using a cover search machine. So here is my trusty Adidas um, swimsuit from that uh, precious very short-lived phase in my life when I was trying to be a triathlete. Uh, so I bought one of these more like a speedy swimsuit because I, I I learned because I was learning how to do you say crawl in English? Oh, I forgot the word now. Not the breaststroke because in Sweden we only taught the breaststroke in school um, in swimming school. But anyways, 
When you are making swimwear, you would definitely benefit from having a cover system. Now, of course, you can do a lot of these things on your regular sewing machine using um, a regular zigzag or the three-step zigzag, even better because it has more stretch and it's more durable. But for that professional finish, it's really nice to have a cover stitch machine. And this Adidas has, um, I think, three different ways of using the cover stitch machine. The first one, which is also a method that I describe in my book, is that it's used to stitch down the elastic on the, the leg opening and also in the back and in the, I think in the front as well. Um, what I show in my book is the method that I prefer because it's much easier to do. And that is that you first attach the elastic using a serger or a zigzag stitch and then you fold it over along the edge and then you stitch with a narrow uh, two needle cover stitch uh, whereas this is actually not that it doesn't have a two-step method this is just inserting the elastic and then stitching over so you have to stretch out while you are stitching uh, so this is like next level stuff, definitely. Uh, if you're just starting out swimmer, I would definitely recommend to use the method I described in my book. But if you're feeling brave and want to reduce bulk, definitely use this method as well. And speaking of Woolly Nylon, which we talked about before, it's Woolly Nylon in the looper, all the stitches of this one. So I'm really curious to know if you use the cover stitch machine for swimwear, because it's definitely really, really beneficial. I love stitching elastic with the cover stitch machine because it provides such wonderful stretch and it never really pops again uh definitely go with larger needles because elastic can be kind of tricky when you are using a cover stitch machine but even my sort of moody yanoma does this really well actually if i just get the settings right and now my husband also donated <laughs> Love the stream. Thank you so much. I have gotten my first ever donation, I think, for my live stream. Thank you so much, honey. <laughs> it's nice to have you sitting in the other room now. So that's a re really, really nice. <laughs> um, and another part that you can use the, um, the cover stitch for is binding. So this has binding all the way around. And it's using, again, the two needle. And on the inside, it's woolly nylon and one thing to know that when you're stitching elastic is you definitely should go for a longer stitch length because you will you will stretch it while you while you sew right because the elastic is usually shorter than the garment and then it will pull together so you will actually see the stitches looks quite tiny when they sort of compress together right like this um, so this is a really nice way of using it and i also think that the the iconic three stripe Adidas is also attached using a wide cover stitch, two needle cover stitch. So these are some ideas that you can use for your swimwear if you have a cover stitch machine. Again, zigzag works nicely, but if you're like me and want to experiment with more professional technique, I highly recommend that you also wipe, uh, bring out your cover stitch machine and try some techniques as well. Um, and yes, yeah, speaking about, let me see here. Yes, because we have some more cool ideas as well. I'm going to keep the time on time. Uh, uh, another thing that you can do with a cover stitch machine. And now we're going to talk a little about those details on t-shirts and knitwear. They can also use a cover stitch machine in a really nice and very simple way. Also, bye, but first, Kristen says in the chat, I'm just starting sewing swimwear, but I use the cover stitch a lot for sewing underwear and lingerie. A great, great option as well. You can attach stretch elastic. You can attach fold of elastic. Uh, you can stitch and fold. For instance, I actually brought out some, some of my pants as well. Probably lost them in, in the, the mess that I created, but um, it's really, really great. So I'm really curious to know, Kristen, what you are using the cover stitch for as well. Um, and if you have a top cover machine, you will be happy to to know that a lot of the ready to wear undies are often done using the top cover. So if you have one of those, you can definitely take it to the next level as well. So it's a really good way of using it. Again, I highly recommend that you use the soft, glossy woolen nylon in the looper uh, when doing underwear as well. 
I can't find my knickers, but that was that was a little bit sidetracked by that. Um, again, in my book, I talk a lot about how to attach various elastic when you're sewing uh, sewing um, lingerie and underwear. So there are a lot of things you can use for that. But now I was going to talk about the other method I want to show you because I find it really exciting as well. Because you, you probably noticed, especially on menswear, they have usually some really nice detailing when it comes to knit. So for instance, you've probably seen this um, V shape. This is a, like an iconic look that's been around for a long time on sweatshirts. And this is done using, again, the top cover, but you can actually mimic this using a regular um, three thread cover lock. So I'm going to see if I can find that one. Uh, in my book, I show um, this one is actually done using um, like a gusset, a um, triangle gusset insert. So it's a little bit more tricky. In my book, I show work around that by applying the contrasting fabric and then stitching over it. But you can also do it just like this. This is a regular three thread reverse cover stitching. And this is a really fun way to mimic those like traditional like usually menswear i think but it's definitely a unisex uh look of that so it's really nice i, I love this finish personally a lot and uh, another way also you can use the cover stitch for i'm going to see if i can pick up that one as well Yeah, I'm going to show you here. Uh, one really cool thing that I actually found on t-shirt that I have is you can also, you know, sometimes on, on finer t-shirts when you buy them ready to wear, they have a band that extends not just from the back neckline, it actually extends all the way from one shoulder seam all the way around to here. And if you look closely, now I have no idea if you will see this, so I'm going to look at do you see this? This is the shoulder seam of a ready to wear t-shirt. And the stitching here is actually the chain in the chain stitch. So it's actually stitched on the reverse. So if you, we turn this, it looks like this. And then, so it starts at the shoulder seam and moves around the back and then continue all the way to the other shoulder seam. I hope that makes sense. So this is a beautiful stitching that I definitely plan to apply more and, and try out. It was actually one of those things because I was already doing so many projects for my book. So this was on my list, but then I realized if I'm going to do all the things, I will need to write a, a book for another year. But this is a really, really nice method. And I know some of you really like the sort of that the inside should look as nice as the outside. So this is a really nice way of using it. And it's basically just a folded strip of fabric, just like the belt loops basically pressed inside. So if you want to try out this, I highly recommend that you start experimenting using this as well. So it's not done using uh, a two needle cover stitch, it's done using a one needle chain stitch with this really decorative effect, super, super cute. And answers, I got, just got your new book. Love it. Thank you so much. Um, shameless plug for my book. <laughs> uh, and a lot of the things that I've talked about in this live stream is also shown the fundamentals in the book. So some of the examples are you can done straight away from the book and some of the examples you can use the knowledge that I share in the book to even expand it even further to learn even more things. And I, I personally feel really, really excited because to be honest, um, I before I began doing the cover stitch book, I also was a little bit limited in my use of the cover stitch machine. So writing this book, researching, visiting the garment uh, factory that I did in research just really also opened my mind on the possibilities that you can do with the cover stitch machine. So I actually have <laughs> expanded my knowledge just by writing this book, which is one of the benefits of, of writing sewing books is that it really helps me also, you know, expand my knowledge and, you know, try out new things and then 
try to figure out the best method and then teach you guys it. So that's one of the really cool things about doing the concept book that I've learned so much myself. And now when I'm in stores, I'm always looking for new ideas on how we can use the cover stitch machine for, you know, our own makes. And Chris says for creative uses and overlock and cover stitch surfer videos from Nancy Seaman, a ton of inspiration and search on blueprint crafts. Yes, that she's a wonderful sewing teacher, a huge inspiration of mine. And I have several of her books. Um, also another cover stitch video uh, teacher on craftsy or blueprint as is Gail um, Patrice Yellen, which is also interviewed in my book. She also has a cover stitch class. Um, and Sarah says, I just received your cover stitch book on Friday. And so what I've read is very informative. I'm looking forward to using techniques in the book. Thank you for all the info. Thank you so much, Sarah. Um, and if you have any more questions about cover stitching, such as, you know, thread, needles, any tips on tensions, all that stuff, please ask away now so I can finish that. Because that will be, if you have any more questions, because it definitely is a machine that, you know, sometimes um, challenge us. Uh, it's not always, as I said, the most easy machine to learn, which is also why I felt sort of compelled to write this book, because just like a lot of other people, I've struggled a fair bit when it comes to using the cover stitch machine. So that's definitely, um, and you also need to sort of try out what works for your machine. So it's, it's sometimes hard to give general advice when it comes to settings, because it can depend a lot. So my best tip is basically always do a sample using the fabric you tend to use. And, you know, if you're sewing over bulky lace, try out that. And the good news is that just by altering things like the, um, the stitch length, perhaps changing to a larger needle, um, changing the pressure foot pressure, either lowering it or raising it, depending on different factors of the differential feed. And sometimes changing pressure foot as well. All these things can help a lot. And also if you have problems, I definitely recommend uh, investing in a clear pressure foot. I think it's available to um, most cover stitch brands. And I think if you buy the Genome, at least this uh, cover stitch 3550 top coat one, it actually has a um, clear foot as a standard foot. And that also is super helpful, especially if you want to stitch using um, decorated stitching, because then you really want it to look straight if the, f if the thread is contrasting. Um, and we have more cash, I'm uh, not pronouncing this right. Uh, cash Nikau, hi, so late to the party, but I've definitely rewatched the stream. My cover is home for nearly a week. I ended with Genome 2000, and part of your help and information is also important. Thank you so much. And um, definitely, if you have more help, I've done several videos demonstrating uh, the Genome. Also, if you check out my blog, you will find lots of tutorials based on the Genome and. Uh, I also plan to do more Genome tutorials using different attachment now that I have the book out of my system. So stay tuned for that. I will do more specific teaching on that, but for the, a lot of the stuff would also be applicable to other type of cover stitch machine. Um, well, it is about time now. We've been going on for an hour. The time definitely flies by as always when you're doing this live chat. Um, let me see if I had any more. I did have one more thing that I just, want to show you another some other options that you can use of course this is the type of shorts that i um borrowed for from my daughter uh this is using the binding which is a really nice detail it's sort of typical um athletic gym shorts so this is binding and stitching over layers really really beautiful you can definitely do that simply on a composition machine and the cool thing also discovered which i have not tried myself is that the elastic is actually stitched down using uh, the top co cover stitch and you can also definitely use the three new cover stitch so it has a really distinct look here and I, I was like this is i'm going to try because i'm making her track pants now uh short and i'm going to try using the cover stitch for that the, rather the three needle cover stitch for that nice finishing as well so as i said i always come up with new ideas of how to use the cover stitch machine um And uh, also I have a question about the pressure, uh, pressure yeah. KMB says, I love your book. Page 90 talks about increasing the pressure on the pressure foot when fabric is bulky. Can you explain how that works? Yeah, it has to do, I think, 
the general advice and this will have variations but um, when you're stitching over thicker fabrics uh, it helps if the pressure is higher uh, I think it's because of the friction so it, the feeding will improve if you have more so you're basically increasing the pressure by by screwing the knob downwards I, I realized in hindsight that I should have done a better job of really really explaining this well in the book because it's when you say it it sounds like you're doing two opposite things but you increase the pressure and when you're doing lighter fabric that said for instance um, sometimes when I'm stitching binding I've noticed that it does help to decrease the, the pressure so a little bit depends but the general advice when you're using um, a serger and a cover stitch machine is that you need to 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 sort of uh, get the close by and that will increase better squeeze together and, and improve the feeding because that's that's the, like the main problem when you're working with thicker layers uh, I don't have uh, the ability to use I don't have it on my old sewing machine so I'm really curious to know if because I know some more modern sewing machine has the ability of increasing and decreasing the pressure pressure as well so I'm really curious what your experience about that I hope that I made sense so basically you're screwing the knob down or the screw down depending on your machine and this will increase the pressure and that will help on most projects but as I said there is no cover stitch rule that doesn't have exceptions so definitely see what works with your machine because there are a lot of different factors in play here and Patty said hi there first time watching hope I can learn some new things hopefully yes I hope so and if you come in late you can definitely watch the replay uh, I'm not sure you can scroll back while the live stream but after YouTube has done its magic which usually take about half an hour I think the video will pop up and you can watch the replay and I will make it accessible so it's, it will just appear in my regular video feed but it will go into hiding for a little bit because they are trying to format it and it takes a little while sometimes take an hour but so you know the the drill here um, Yes, and um, it also has uh, questions um, about the uh, soft, tight dial on the genoma. Have you experimented? Yes, yes, I have. And the general advice is that if you have problems with skip stitches, it, you should opt for the tight setting. And if you are stitching um, fabrics that are less stretchy and stuff, you can use a soft setting. Uh, I, to be honest, have not been uh, noticing a consistent, um, how shall I put it, it doesn't make a huge difference for me. Uh, but I will say that I was recommended to use the tight when I'm, I'm using a lot of lycra fabric. So I usually try to use that tight, but sometimes I switch back and forth. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not really convinced such a game changer when it comes to... Um, to the the end result to be honest so I'd love to hear your thoughts about that And Dawn, Arlanda says, that's the opposite of using a sewing machine. You decrease the pressure for heavier or thicker fabric. So mm, that's interesting to know. So definitely, I don't think there's a steadfast rule on that. You definitely need to experiment and see what works for you. Um, S says, I have the Anoma cover process 2000. It's taking a long time to get my head around it. I'm very happy with it. Yeah, there's a learning curve for sure. Um... And Paddy says, I do it primarily for stretch fabric and it gets tricky. What, um, do you have any specific problem? I know that with some stretch fabric, common problems is obviously skip stitches, tunneling, and not getting that, you know, even feeding, for instance. But yes, um, a good tip is when you finalize the settings with when it comes to pressure, uh, the stitch length and all that stuff, definitely write it down so you have some um, reference for that for future use. So definitely see what works. Absolutely. Um, C 
so well i think that's about it i think i've got all the questions and thank you so much for joining me tonight we had a super fun set i hope you you got inspired to try out your cover stitch machine for some new projects and uh, if you're new to my live stream i do a live stream the last sunday of each month at 8 pm central european time 2 pm eastern american time uh, there can be exceptions if I'm away or have some other type of commitment, but usually that is the drill and, and I tell it in advance, both on my blog, my Instagram, and also I have a monthly newsletter you can subscribe to if you head over to my blog, thelastitch.com. And there you also find lots of other cover stitching tips as well, if you want to learn more about cover stitching. Um, what else? Well, that's about it, I think. Uh, thank you so much for joining me and, well... I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.